I'm Suzanne Sinclair and I'm here in Perth, Western Australia. Today's date is the 8th of August 2018. On uh, Sunday, July the 29th, I was reading the Sunday Times and I came across an article which states that the government has denied Agent Orange has ever been sprayed, which personally affected me as it affected my son's father my sons, so two sons, my son's father, and expected personally to me, which I feel to my son, Nigel. After uh, reading the article on the 29th of July, on the Sunday, um, I felt I had to respond to that because um, I felt that they were just covering up a lie. And so I contacted the uh, reporter and uh, stated that have they got any reply from this? So I kind of told my story over the phone and came and done pictures. And on Sunday the 5th of August, I got myself in the paper with my story in regards to my son's father and my son, because I felt it needs to be told. I felt that they can't just sit there and say what they're saying because it is affecting people. It is affecting us and I don't feel my grandchildren can say anything because they're not old enough at the moment. Um, but I still feel, they must still feel angry that there's no dad around. So I felt I had to tell my story. Um, my story is that I went to Derby in 1977 and I was there doing a nursing course and I met Mr Hunter and um, that a year and a half after that we started a relationship and then um, I became pregnant with Nigel and I had Nigel when I was 22 and uh, Cyril was working with the Ag Department, Agriculture Department at the time and um, he was doing spraying and he used to come home with drums in the back of his truck. He, he used to put his swag in the back of the truck, he used to put his bag with his clothes in the back of that truck and the bag and the swag would come back into a, the house and into the room where I would have Nigel sleeping and I would wash his clothes and those clothes would go back into the bag and then the process would just keep going. Um, our relationship uh, did end but I became pregnant with our second son. Uh, Cyril was still working out with the APB, still doing spraying and um, I noticed he became quite sick. He came to visit me and he had, showing me that he had lost weight. I could see that. He had um, the side of, one side of his face was very enlarged and um, I was too sure if he had ulcers or um, boils or whatever it was, but he was very, and he was sick. And um, I was, about seven and a half months, nearly close to eight months, when uh, one of Cyril's, uh, not only family relation, but a worker, colleague, came to my house to inform me that Cyril had passed away. And this was in uh, November the 5th, 1983. And um, we had to, yeah, go through, uh, well, the family mostly did all the arrangements. I had couldn't cope being pregnant. And then um, go through the funeral. And six weeks after that, I gave birth to our second son. And so we just had to continue on. But to know that there was drums and to know that he was dealing with Agent Orange, we always kind of felt that that contributed to his death because he was this larger than life man, fit, healthy, to deteriorate in the period of the time that I was, had been with him and then to see him only when he used to just to visit was, you know, an eyesore. An eyesore. But um, personally for myself, for that story, to say that, it hurt because it's just saying alleged and that's like saying it's a lie to me and for my children to lose their father, and my, Nigel was only two at the time, um, is, was 
terrible the fact that he never saw them grow. They never got to know him. Um, he never got to see them. Nigel became a qualified butcher and um, my son Aaron became a boiler maker. And he would have been so proud of that because I knew he liked education. I think he would have advocated for them to be to school. And um, even in the boys, I mean, and Nigel said, I think Dad would have felt proud because Nigel did put his story in the paper himself. But Aaron, I feel that he never got the opportunity for me to even say, your father got to see you because he'd already passed before he was born. So I feel for him it, it could be a bit harder. He's also lost the fact that he has three grandsons because Nigel left behind two boys and um, Aaron has had one boy who will be turning five soon. So he's missed out on that. He's also missed out on meeting his nieces and nephews um, and I think he would have been the most awesomest grandfather and the uncle who would have just taken all these kids. They would have been the biggest crowd going bush ever because I think he just would have taken it because he loved the bush so much. So, yeah, so I just feel within myself the loss and, you know, and that's going to be carrying on. And then, like, for Nigel to pass with an illness that I wouldn't wish on any parent to stand there and see my son deteriorate the way he did to the point where he, I was pushing him in a wheelchair. Um, and then to be at a hospital and see him take his last breath, that's not what any parent wants. And um, I know the government's not going to most acknowledge that Leo Meyer is a cancer that you can get from Agent Orange, but to me, it will always be a cancer from Agent Orange. This is my story, but there's many other stories that need to be told and they are out there and I'm hoping that they will come forward and tell their stories.